Good evening. Welcome to Heartland Church and our midweek service. And uh, we're giving everybody, of course, a few minutes to get on, but it's really good to be together again tonight and good to see uh, everyone that's here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so welcome. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Hope your week is off to a great start and uh, you're halfway through. So Woo! Uh, even if the first half wasn't everything you thought it would be, um, you have the rest of this week. So Amen. that's awesome. Um, I am actually logging in here myself. So let's get that and then we'll start singing in just a moment. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to all those behind the scenes making yes. this happen. We got Carlos in the back and Brandon right here. And, um, the other Brandon and Ted uh, are supervising, I guess, is what they're doing tonight. So uh, Brandon Miller JT is, holding is down on percussion, and Josh is on bass and vocals over here. You can't see him, but uh, Josh has our lesson tonight as well. So um, super excited just for some stuff coming up, and we'll share more towards the end of our service tonight about some upcoming things that we're going to be doing as a church. But um, in the meantime, we're going to start singing with a song called He Reigns.
to our Wednesday night Facebook Live midweek services, and I've got a scripture I'd like to read to start off here this evening. It's in the Psalms, and this is Psalm 121. It says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. You know, this is such a great psalm and just it's so true about our God that God watches over us. And it says that I lift up my eyes to him. Where does my help come from? And, you know, in times of, of trouble, in, in good times, in, you know, in all times, we need to lift up our eyes to the Lord. That's where our help comes from. That's who's going to sustain us. You know, when, when those little things can just start nagging at us, I know my nature is to just kind of let those things nag more and more and more instead of really lifting up my eyes to the Lord. And it says he won't let our feet slip. And then it goes on, he says, he doesn't slumber, he doesn't sleep. And, you know, God is always there. If you wake up in the middle of the night, God is there. If you're going about your day and you're in the hustle and bustle of your job and everything, God is there. And he's always watching over you. And that's such a comforting feeling to know that we have a heavenly father who watches over us. And nothing in the world can happen to you. That God does not either allow to happen for some purpose that he has or, or cause to happen. Sometimes good things happen and God's like, hey, I'm going to do this in your life. Um, or, or sometimes even the challenges. You know, God does things just to help us grow. And, um, you know, lately uh, our son has been driving. Uh, he got his permit. And so uh, every chance we get, he's like, can I drive? Can I drive? And, you know, as we're driving, there are little things that I'll ask him to do. I'll be like, okay, pull over here or, or switch lanes or you know, let's take this road. And I'm kind of guiding him along to help him learn those skills of driving. And I think in much the same way, God does that in our lives. He guides us along. And, you know, maybe my son wanted to go over here, but I said, no, nope, we're going over there. And so we're going to go over there. And sometimes with God, you know, maybe I want to go over here. And God's like, nope, you're going over here. And, um, so, you know, that's just important to remember. God is watching over us. Nothing happens by accident. Um, God is totally in control. And at the end of the day, we're going to be with him eternally. And that's what really matters. And, and we, you know, Jesus said, in this life, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Amen. And, uh, you know, that's just such a comforting thing, no matter what we're going through, good or bad. Uh, so at this time, we're going to pray. Would you like to pray? Yep. And then we'll sing one more song before the lesson tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we just come before you so grateful to be able to talk to you right now. So grateful that you desire to have a relationship with us, that you desire to want us to just pour out our hearts to you. Good, bad, ugly. God, you want to hear it all. And um, yes, we know <laughs> you know what we're thinking, but you still want us to come to you, God, just like we want our children to come to us. And so, Father, I just thank you for that. Thank you for um, just the... The scriptures that you give us, God, to guide us back to what is right and righteous, God, to guide us back to you when everything might seem scary or overwhelming or crazy or um, even going great, God, just the scriptures guide us back to you and how you call us just to keep our eyes on you, Father. And when we do that, life goes so much easier, God. So just thank you for the scriptures. Thank you, God, for um, our brothers and sisters all around the world. Father, that we can just lift each other up in prayer. We can come to you, God. There are so many people right now who are hurting, Father, in so many different ways, God. I can, there's people with coronavirus. There's people with cancer. There's uh, just so many hurts out there right now, God. And uh, I just pray that you uh, give an extra special um, hug to each one of them, God. Help them to feel that. Help them to feel that you are holding them in the palm of your hand, God. And that if they just turn to you, we can come to you at any time, God. We love you so much, and we pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. We're going to do a song now that we've uh, done a few times in the past before, but we haven't done it a lot, and so uh, the lyrics will be down below, but this song is called I'm Gonna Praise You. It's not I'm gonna. going to, it's gonna. 
And with, when you sing this song, you gotta have a little bit of attitude. It's kind of a funky song, and uh, you can't sing, you know, I'm going to praise you. It's, I'm gonna praise you. So as you're singing at home, get a little attitude. And imagine somebody telling you, you're not gonna praise God. And you're like, no, I'm gonna praise God. Uh, so here we go. This is, I'm gonna praise you. I'm gonna praise you with my song. Gonna praise you with my spirit. Gonna praise you with my song. Gonna praise you all day long. Thanks, JT. I am sitting, uh, unlike Harold, standing last time, and that's okay either way. Uh, you know, nothing wrong with standing, nothing wrong with sitting either uh, for, for giving a lesson in this kind of midweek, homey environment. So I'm so happy to get to share uh, this evening with you guys. Uh, whenever you might be listening, I'm just excited to, to get to share my heart and you know, uh, I pray God's heart as well uh, with you guys. And I I'm really excited for talking to you guys and sharing today. Uh, I, th I think it's so important to really follow up and, and prepare our hearts for this series that we're about to undertake. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you didn't listen to the sermon uh, on Saturday night slash Sunday morning or whenever you might have tuned in, um, you know, Tim was unveiling, you know, unrolling this series that we've been going through uh, that's focused on the fruits of the Spirit. And he really just talked a lot about what the Spirit is, about how prevalent the Spirit is throughout the Bible and, and how crucial that that really is. And I wanted to follow up and kind of uh, just give some more information, give some more wisdom and, and understanding as far as what the Spirit's like, as far as what what to expect uh, with, you know, considering the spirit and to prepare us to be able to really undertake uh, what it is to, to even work on the fruits of the spirit. And so uh, to prepare us for that, it's really important to have first uh, watched Tim uh, or listened to Tim's sermon uh, from Saturday slash Sunday. So if you haven't done that and you are not watching this live, uh, I, I urge you pause right now and, and go uh, listen to that sermon. You can either uh, watch the whole service or skip maybe the first 15 minutes and listen to the sermon on Facebook that way. Uh, or on YouTube, we have the same thing. Or uh, you can go to our website and the whole sermon will be on SoundCloud. So uh, with that being said, if hopefully you've paused 
and gone back if you need to. Otherwise, uh, I'm just real excited to get into it today. And I, what I really want to focus on is what is the Spirit for? Uh, what's the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Uh, you know, I, I think listing, uh, as Tim listed all the different things that the Spirit does and a bunch of different scriptures that mention the Spirit, like not grieving in the Spirit and not blaspheming it, it, it feels overwhelming. Uh, that, that almost like, man, where do I even start uh, with understanding the Spirit? And that feeling of being overwhelmed can lead to a lot of confusion. And if we don't really pursue an understanding of the Holy Spirit, if we don't pursue past that confusion, then that's how it stays. Uh, that we just are perpetually confused and we avoid the topic altogether. But it's really important. Uh, the Holy Spirit is all over Scripture, and it's so crucial uh, in so much. And so uh, when answering this question of what is the Spirit for, uh, there are a few different scriptures that say a lot about what this, the Spirit does. Uh, I can think of several. Uh, in John 14, it talks about the Spirit as being an advocate, or other translations say a helper uh, for us. So it's there to, to help advocate on our behalf, to help us, to prop us up and support us. Uh, Romans 8 says it intercedes for us uh, with groans that, that are, surpass human understanding, uh, which is really interesting that, it, that it's able to, to be a go-between uh, for us and God, which is super cool. Of course, Galatians 5, we see that it gives us uh, the fruits of the Spirit. It allows us to, to be empowered, to grow in those different things, right? Uh, Isaiah 11 says that the Spirit of God gives wisdom and understanding. Uh, super incredible to be able to have those, right? Uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm lacking in those so often, uh, and I need more of that. I need the Spirit to give me all the more uh, wisdom and understanding. Uh, the book of Acts shows us that the Spirit gives power. Uh, even in Acts 1, Jesus says the Spirit will come on you and give you power. Uh, so amen. The Spirit is able to give power. Uh, it also, in John 16, guides us into all truth. So just like, uh, you know, JT, as he's learning to drive, desperately needs that guide, uh, so do we uh, need a guide into all truth, uh, just like what Tim was sharing. And then, of course, in Ephesians, it talks about that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit seals us. Uh, and there are so many other places and translations. It's a counselor. It's a comforter. It's Man, you name it. it. It's wearing all these different hats. And because the Spirit does so much, almost has its hands in everything, in every aspect of the Bible and every aspect of us trying to live it out, it can be that much more overwhelming to really tackle this question of what's the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Uh, or does it even have a purpose? Does it even, is it just doing and filling all these needs uh, that God has for it, or does it have a set, determined point, uh, like something that it's striving for, something it's really going after, and it's just doing that in a lot of different ways. Uh, I'm convinced by looking at the scripture that it's the second one, and I, I plan on sharing some of those scriptures with you uh, this evening. So uh, to start that really delving into its purpose, we're going to start in Genesis chapter 1. Uh, the very first place where uh, the Holy Spirit is mentioned at all, and so I f felt like that was a, a pretty relevant place to start. Uh, so turn with me uh, to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 2. Uh, I, man, love the, the book of Genesis, love even specifically the first couple or three chapters here are just so impactful uh, for me. So I just, I love reading them. We're going to start here in verse 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. I love that image, right? That you just have this mass uh, of uselessness, uh, of, you know, void. It is a word that, that both of these words that are used here kind of translate to. That it's formless and empty. It's void. It's nothing. It's, it's something, but it's nothing. Uh, like there's something there, but it's, it's useless. It's maybe you could even think of it as hopeless. Uh, that this is just going to be a, a mass of nothing. 
forever. And that, that's all it was ever going to be. Uh, and what do you see hovering over the, the waters of this chaos but the Holy Spirit? Uh, you see the Spirit of God uh, ready to get to work. And so what happens the rest of this chapter? Well, God creates, right? He, he says and it becomes. Uh, he, he speaks and it comes into creation. It comes into reality. Even the term reality didn't even really exist until he created this. And so I love this moment uh, that we, we get to see right before creation. Because I think it, it's a snapshot of what the Holy Spirit's purpose really is. Uh, that as we see, it's formless and empty. That means it's confused. It, it is confusion. It's chaos. It's nothing. Uh, nothingness, even. It's, it's a waste. Uh, and what does God make it? Right? What does God create with that? He brings life. He brings order. He, he stills all the confusion, and he brings nothingness to the point of being usefulness. Uh, so he makes nothing into something, uh, which is just incredible. I mean, it's a really simple phrase, but God is able here to bring something out of nothing, uh, which, you know, I certainly can't do. Uh, if you're able to do that, please post in the comments. Uh, I would love to meet you because that would be incredible. But... Uh, that's a snapshot of what the Holy Spirit is for. Because as God does that, the Holy Spirit is present. And I would dare say he is the part that allows God to be able to do that. The fact that the Holy Spirit was there and that God uses the Holy Spirit to do this means that the Holy Spirit is needed for bringing nothing to being something. The Holy Spirit is needed for the process of bringing nothing to being something. And I think that that's so incredible and really shows us the whole purpose of the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit is meant to make something out of nothing. That the point of the Holy Spirit is to, in, in every way conceivable, make something great, make something useful, make something ordered, make something helpful, Make something hopeful out of nothing, out of hopelessness, out of chaos, out of everything terrible and void of everything that's good. The Holy Spirit comes in and brings good, comes in and creates goodness. And that is what we see throughout the rest of the pages of the Bible, that the Holy Spirit's purpose, that its mission, if you will, is to, to find the voids, to find the nothingnesses, to find everything that is lacking and bring it to fruition, uh, to bring it to maturity, to bring it to goodness. And I think that it's so, so crucial that we wrap our heads around that. Um, it's just amazing to think that something is capable of doing that, but the truth of the matter is that God is truly capable of that. Uh, that the Holy Spirit is his chosen way of creating, is his chosen way of making good really happen. Uh, and just for our understanding, uh, I am going to butcher these words here, but uh, I went back to really consider what's the word uh, that is used here for spirit. Every time in the, the scriptures that Holy Spirit is, is mentioned, at least in the Old Testament, the word is ruach. And that's probably not going to translate very well through the microphone. Uh, Tim said it was excellent. So, you know, I, I think he's an expert in that. Um, but it, it, microphone aside, I probably wouldn't do a good job of, uh, of enunciating it anyway. But this word ruach uh, obviously means spirit. But in addition, it means breath or wind. Uh, so this idea that the spirit of God is the, is the breath of God. Uh, elsewhere in the scriptures, uh, outside of used for Ruach Elohim, uh, which is, you know, breath of God or spirit of God, uh, we see it used a ton of different ways, but a, a lot of them are actually the breath of life. Uh, Elo, or sorry, Ruach, um, 
Hey, I think, or hi, something. I, I'm not an expert, but uh, th this phrasing is the, the breath of life that is in everything that is living. Uh, so this phrase is used uh, to describe when all the creatures came onto the ark uh, to be saved. They came two by two, everything with the breath of life in it, everything with that ruach uh, that, that is in it. Uh, and so everything that's alive has ruach. And when you lose that ruach, you don't have life anymore. Uh, and so this, this word uh, that, that means spirit, and specifically when it's with Elohim is when it's God's spirit, this, we're supposed to connect this with life. We're supposed to connect this throughout the, the whole scriptures of, of that it brings life. And so this even further supports what we're really looking at here is that the point of the Holy Spirit is to bring goodness. It's to bring life. Uh, and so to look at this a little deeper in, in kind of a more modern context, uh, we're going to turn to 1 Samuel chapter 10. Because uh, to be honest with you, uh, it's incredible that the Holy Spirit was able to create, was able with God to, to do something that magnificent, and that powerful, but the world's already here, right? Everything in creation has already happened. And so, you know, what, what has the Holy Spirit done for me lately, right? Uh, what, what is it still doing? What is it still active in doing? And what's its purpose now? Uh, and so I think that it has a very similar, if not the identical purpose that it had back then, uh, just in a, a more modern context. And so 1 Samuel chapter 10 uh, is where we're going to pick up. We're going to start in verse 1. Here it says, then Samuel took a flask of olive oil and poured it on Saul's head and kissed him, saying, Has not the Lord anointed you, you ruler over his inheritance? When you leave me today, you will meet two men near Rachel's tomb uh, at Zelka on the border of Benjamin. They will say to you, The donkeys you set out to look for have been found, and now your father has stopped thinking about them and is worried about you. He is asking, What shall I do about my son? Then you will go on from there until you reach the great tree of Tabor. Three men uh, going up to worship God at Bethel will meet you there. One will be carrying three young goats, another three loaves of bread, and another a skin of wine. They will greet you and offer you two loaves of bread, which you will accept from them. So none of that really means anything in our context yet. But what's going on here is he's kind of prophesying what Saul is about to go through. This is the moment where he's anointing him uh, that he's going to be the first king of Israel. What an incredible moment for, for God's people. And, and so he kind of outlines this is what's going to happen. Uh, so pick him back up in verse 5. After that, you will go to Gibeah of God, uh, where there is a Philistine outpost. As you approach the town, you will meet a procession of prophets coming down from the high place with lyres, timbrels, pipes, and harps being played before them, and they will be prophesying. The Spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you, and you will prophesy with them, and you will be changed into a different person. Once these signs are fulfilled, do whatever your hand finds to do, for God is with you. Go down ahead of me to Gilgal. I will surely come down to you to sacrifice burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, but you must wait seven days until I come to you and tell you what you are, go are to do. As Saul turned to leave Samuel, God changed Saul's heart. And all these signs were fulfilled that day. When he and his servant arrived in Gibeah, a procession of prophets met him. The Spirit of God came powerfully upon him, and he joined in their prophesying. When all those who had formerly known him saw him prophesying with the prophets, they asked each other, What is this that has happened to the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? We're going to stop there. What an incredible moment. We see that Saul is just a normal guy. Uh, he's just another person in Israel, just a, a Benjamite even, that at some point he says, oh, I'm a Benjamite, the least of all the tribes of Israel, right? He's, he's just another, another guy. And then uh, the Holy Spirit comes powerfully on him and changes him into a totally new person. What an awesome moment, right? That the Holy Spirit is able to make a shift of that nature. 
that, that Saul was nothing, that he was just another person. He was just uh, your average Joe. And the Holy Spirit comes down onto him, and all of a sudden, he's a new person. It said that God changed his heart. Uh, the actual verbiage there in the original uh, Hebrew was that he gave him a new heart, totally transformed this man. And it was all because of the Holy Spirit. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the purpose of the Holy Spirit. That it found the void that was in Saul. It found the nothingness, the, the hopelessness. What would become just a life full of and rife of sin that he would be incapable of escaping. And he was transformed in that moment by the Holy Spirit. Wow, that's so cool. And that's a glimpse of what the Holy Spirit is really all about. Is about finding the voids in you and I. Finding the voids in all those people that, that you run into at the grocery store, hopefully six feet away from. And, and all those people that, that you interact with six feet away from with your mask on uh, at work or whatever you might be doing. That all of the people it, that you've ever seen, that it's searching. The Holy Spirit is searching for those people to fill and, and shape and totally transform to be more than they ever could. To take nothingness and make it something. Make it something, not just something, but something good. Something useful, something awesome. And that is the hope for us. That the Holy Spirit is able to do that with you and I. That he is able to come in and, and wreak havoc to all the sin that's in our lives and change it into something incredible. Transform it into something that's awesome. Now, maybe you've heard the phrase, uh, the people never change. People never really change. And honestly, I believe that that's true when God's not in the picture. When God isn't around, people don't change. People will always come back to the same habits, always come back to the same problems, always come back, give in to that same sinful nature. Because without God, we are powerless against that. But with the Holy Spirit on our side, we can be so much more. The Holy Spirit wants to come in and change us to be so much more. And so when we think about these fruits of the Spirit, that's why they're fruits of the Holy Spirit. That the Spirit produces in us those incredible things. Uh, I don't know if I can name them. It doesn't matter. You can look them up in Galatians 5. I, I think I could. It doesn't matter. Um, look them up. And they, they honestly are a little overwhelming, right? Love, man, how can I be love? How can something produce love in me because I don't naturally love very well, right? I'm not naturally very peaceful. And yet the Holy Spirit can produce in me peace, right? That, that I can have joy, that I can have, you name it, self-control. Man, I'm terrible about having self-control naturally, and yet with the Holy Spirit, it's able to transform me to be something I'm not, to be something I would have never been without the Holy Spirit. And that is what the Holy Spirit's purpose is with you. Now, anyone that knows Saul's story knows that he does not stay transformed for very long, that he maybe starts out pretty well, and then everything goes downhill real quick. And I think that that's a cautionary tale for us, that just because we are committed to walking in step with the Holy Spirit now doesn't mean that we will be eternally just, oh, well, I'm awesome forever because of the Holy Spirit. No, we have to continually uh, recommit ourselves, that we have to make sure we are walking in step with the Spirit every day, just like what Tim shared on Sunday, that the Spirit is working in you right now, is fighting for you to be more than you ever thought you could be. More than honestly you ever could have been without it. It's fighting that fight. But you need to make the choice. I need to make the choice. We need to make the choice to really let it do its work. To listen to the Holy Spirit and choose as it guides us. Because all those things that the Holy Spirit does, all that the Holy Spirit wants to do in you, it can and will 
if we let it happen. We are the only thing that is stopping the Holy Spirit from doing its work when it's not working. Amen. And so my plea for us is to really grapple and understand that the Holy Spirit is working to change your heart. It's working to change my heart. It's working to shape us to be more than we ever could, to embody those fruits of the Spirit as much as we possibly can. But it's, it's not that we just sit back and let it do its thing. It's that we are active in pursuing those things with the Holy Spirit, realizing that the only way we can attain them is by relying wholeheartedly on the Holy Spirit. And with that, we're going to pray uh, and continue with the, the rest of our midweek. Heavenly Father, we love you so much, and we are so grateful. Grateful doesn't even begin to describe our feeling for, for that you would give us a Holy Spirit that would allow us to be so much more than we ever could be. Uh, Father, I pray, I pray that we all take it so seriously, uh, this challenge, that we could fast, that we could pray, that we could delve into uh, the fruits of the Spirit and know that if we pursue them wholeheartedly with the power of the Holy Spirit on our side, Father, we can embody them more than we ever could have. We will embody them better than ever. So, Father, I pray that we can all be inspired, uh, that we can all just push to know you all the better and to allow the Holy Spirit to do its work and honestly to get out of its way when we need to. Father, we love you and I pray uh, for all of our hearts to continue to be open and listening to your Holy Spirit. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Josh. You know, I'm super excited. Uh, just to see what God's going to do over the next 40 days. And, uh, you know, if you weren't able to, to be with us this weekend, either on Sunday or Saturday evening here, um, go back and, and watch our lesson. It's on Facebook Live. And uh, we, we're, we're going to start off on this 40-day journey together, just pursuing the Holy Spirit, pursuing the fruits of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And, um, you know, one thing we, we talked about on Saturday is before we start just doing a bunch of things, and there's a lot to be done, amen? But we want to focus on who do we need to be um, and being the men and women of God that we need to be and really having those fruits of the spirit in our lives. And so we're going to start a 40 day fast this Saturday. And so what that means is you, you pick one thing, uh, something that means something to you or that you really enjoy or that it's, you know, kind of uh, hard for you to give up. And one thing for 40 days that you're just going to. Get, get rid of. Maybe it's listening to the radio. Maybe it's watching television. Maybe it's a certain food that you like. Uh, whatever it is for you, you pick something that's a sacrifice. And for 40 days, you give that up. And every time that you're tempted or you want to have that thing, you pray and you think about, okay, this is the fruit of the Spirit. I'm growing in the fruits of the Spirit. And then the other part of the fast that we're going to do is we want everybody um, in Heartland Church, and if you're, if you're not part of Heartland Church, you want to do it with us, please join us. But we want everybody to pick one day a week that will fast, uh, fast from food. Um, if, if you can't fast from food, you know, do, do what you can do physically. We don't want to put anybody in any kind of uh, health situation or anything. But if you're able to fast completely, I don't know what that was. Um, if you're able to fast completely from food, that's, that's the hope. But if you can't, that's totally fine. Do what you can do. But what we're going to do is um, talk to your small group leaders and let them know what day of the week. So maybe you want to do Sundays or maybe you want to do Wednesdays, whatever day you want to do. And then we're going to put it all kind of in a spreadsheet. And, and that way we can know who's fasting with us. So maybe Crystal and I are fasting on the same day. We can encourage one another. And we'll send that out to you guys. And that way you'll know, oh, you know, Jesus is fasting on the same day as I am. And Kara is. And, and Carlos, whoever. Um, and then we can encourage one another and spur one another on in our fast. Um, so anyway, that's going to start on this Saturday. So if you want to fast on Saturdays, this Saturday would be your first day to do that. A uh, couple other things that I wanted to let you guys know about. One, uh, speaking of Saturday, we'll have a Saturday night service live here at the building for anybody that wants to come weather. and weather permitting. And I looked at the forecast and right now the high on Saturday is 80. So that oh, means at seven o'clock in the evening, it's going to be pretty nice. We've got a huge lawn out back that you can come and social distance and, and uh, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, you can do that. If you want to wear a mask, you can do that, but we'll be outdoors so it's not required in that sense. So 
Anyway, Saturday night, 7 o'clock, or we'll be here on Facebook on Sunday morning at 10 a.m., 10.30 a.m. Um, and the other thing I want to announce, and this is really exciting, is, um, you know, normally when we meet all together for church, we have something called Kids Kingdom. And that's our kids' classes, and they have so much fun, and we have great teachers, and lots of fun things, and snacks, and all kinds of stuff, and snacks, and more snacks, and uh, a lesson. A lesson, yeah. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to start doing is we're going to have some kids' videos, kids' kingdom videos that we're going to make. We've got some different couples in the church here, parents that are going to make these and send them out. And so if you're a kid, um, elementary and under, uh, these are going to be specifically designed for you guys. And we'll send them out, and you can watch them before church, you can watch them after church. Uh, we're not going to post them, so if you want these and you, you're not part of our, our uh, fellowship here, let us know and we'll send them to you as well. But we're not going to post them just because sometimes there will be kids in them and, you know, just for privacy, whatever. Uh, but we're really excited about these videos. They're going to be super fun, get into the Bible together, have a lot of uh, good times together. So anyway, be looking for those videos coming to you soon. Um, anything else? I don't think so. Just let us know if there's any needs out there. Uh, we know the longer people are out of work. Uh, different things like that, that different needs may arise. So please let us know, your small group leader know, reach out to us, because um, we really want to make sure everybody's being taken care of. So please let us know. Or if you just need somebody to pray with, give us a call or a text, and we'll happily do that. Amen. We're going to sing one final song, and then we'll have our Zoom call, and the link for that will be in the comments on, uh, on your Facebook page. Thanks, Carly. So this is Hold to God's Unchanging Hand.